Once you homebrew your PlayStation Portable, not only can you play any PSP or PlayStation game, but we can also emulate a whole range of other retro consoles. So, let me show you how. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you've been following my PlayStation Portable videos, you'll know how to install the ARC4 custom firmware so that you can play games from backup files. But the modification also lets you run homebrew applications. Now these are programs created by PSP fans to allow it to do much more than the original Sony device was ever designed for. Now if you haven't yet modded your PSP, then do check out my videos. It's really easy and you'll have it all set up in about 10 minutes. So to get hold of these homebrew apps, we can just head over to this website at gamebrew.org and there you'll find a pretty comprehensive list of what's available. Now there's a whole range of applications to play around with, but in this video we'll have a look at using the PSP to emulate other consoles so that we can play those games directly on our Sony handheld. So let's start with the Super NES, which is one of my favourite consoles. So if we have a look in the homebrew list, you'll find it's broken down into a number of sections. So if we click into the emulator section, we'll get apps for a wide range of consoles and computers. So if we scroll down to the console section, we can look for an SNES app. Now, now sometimes you will find a range to choose from, so do look at the descriptions to see if you can get a clue as to which one might be the best, but, but at the end of the day you'll probably just need to try a couple out to find out which one works best. Now on this I'm going to use this one here, which is the SNES 9X TYL. And I really initially chose this as it is based on the SNES 9X emulator and is then listed as the most recently updated. And of course, after trying it out, I do know that it actually works really well. So installing the homebrew apps is, is actually really easy. So first of all, go to the page for the particular app and then read through the information um, in, in this Gamebrew website. So most of the apps come with an installation guide. So for this emulator, you can see that there are two versions depending on which PSP you're using. So I'm going to need the S9X TYL ME version because I'm using just a normal PSP. So after that, we'll need to create our own ROMs folder and then that should be everything ready to play. So let's download the software using the download link. This will put an archive file onto your computer, so we just need to extract that onto our hard drive. Now inside that you'll find the two versions that the Gamebrew website mentioned, and those will then be wrapped up in their own subsequent archive files. So we need to extract these out, and then extract that file to get to the actual installation folder that we want to copy across to our PSP. So now we should have the S9X TYLME underscore mod folder. And if you have a look inside that, you'll see an eboot.pbp file. Now, if you watch through my PlayStation games video, um, you'll know that these are the files that the PSP uses to package up applications and games. So this is the folder then, of course, that we need to transfer across to the PSP. But first of all, let's create that ROMs folder inside this package so that we can keep everything together. We can then copy in some SNES game files. And here I'm using extracted games. So if yours are inside a zip file, and then just extract them out to get to the actual ROM files themselves and then copy them in here. So with our installation files all ready, we just need to plug our PSP into our PC over a USB lead or, or, or simply plug your SD card in. So then from our downloads area, we need to copy our folder and then we need to put it into the PSP slash game folder and then just simply paste it in there. And that will just copy across the whole um, folder from our installation. So. That, with that copied across, that is the emulator fully installed. If we now go onto the PSP and into our game and then memory stick menu, we should see the emulator just sitting there. So select it to run it 
and we're now into our SNES game system. So when you first run the software, you'll need to accept some terms and conditions. So just scroll down to the bottom of the page and then press the X button to accept those. We next need to find the ROMs folder. So first press the triangle button to go up a level and then use the D-pad to navigate the menu until you find the games files that we put into the ROMs folder. Just select one with the X button and after a very short delay, we're now playing on a portable Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So as you can see, the emulation is actually really good with great sound and smooth gameplay. And if you do have a problem, just simply have a look at the instructions on the Gamebrew website and that'll give you some tips as to what settings to play about with. But really, that's how easy it is then to set up an emulator or, or any particular homebrew app. So next, let's have a look at the Sega Mega Drive or, or Genesis. Now I'm choosing this one not only because it's a great console, but also to show you that you sometimes do have to play around a bit with either the version or, or the application that, um, to get the one, right one to use. So on the Gamebrew system, it does list something called Pico Drive. And if you look at that information then, you can see that this is for the latest 1.92 version that also includes the Sega Mega Drive CD emulation. But I did find that that doesn't emulate the base model, so the main Mega Drive, as well as one of the older 1.51 versions. So let's look at how to get hold of that. So for each application in Gamebrew, you'll usually get a link to the project website if, if there is one. Now, if we click on that link, you'll be taken out to the Pico Drive page. And here you can find then various information about the project, but also then links to the various versions. So we need here the 1.51 PSP download. Now, again, you find all of this out really by trial and error, or, or you can watch. There, there are people who have done quite in-depth emulation videos for the PSP, and they will then have gone through all of this testing for you and point you towards the right versions. But back to our, our, our 1.5 version, so we simply need to download that package and, of course, then extract that onto our PC to get hold of that installation folder with the eboot.pbp file in it. Now, the instructions on the Gamebrew page do tell us that we need to create a ROMs folder inside this Pico Drive folder, and then just simply put our Mega Drive game files inside that. So as before, once we've got that all prepared, we then just simply need to copy this whole Pico Drive folder across to our PSP and drop it in that PSP uh, game directory. And then we're all set to play our Sega Mega Drive games directly on our Sony handheld. So really that's a, a quick run through of how easy it is to get homebrew emulators and of course other apps up and running on the PlayStation Portable. Now you will find the quality of these uh, homebrew software um, a little bit variable, uh, but if you install one that doesn't work, all you have to do is simply go back onto your PSP SD card and simply delete the installation folder. And again, that's why I, I like to put any of the ROMs and other associated files inside that same folder, so that if I just delete that one folder, that, that completely removes the application from my PSP. Now, don't forget that there are loads of other games, emulators and apps to try out. So just have a browse through that game view directory and really just have some fun. So I hope you find this a useful video. If you have, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this or, or making and programming videos. I look forward to seeing you again very soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.